Trump is a disruptor. Nigel Farage and the UK people, Rahim Hassan, they're disruptors. Salvini and Giorgio Maloney and the brothers of Italy, they're disruptors. If you are such disruptors, let me ask you a question. Did you bring on the financial crisis, the worst crisis since the Great Depression? Right? Did you want to go into Iraq to look for weapons of mass destruction? When the weapons of mass destruction were being created on Wall Street, the city of London and Frankfurt. While the Financial Times and the Economist and the Times of London and the New York Times and the Washington Post and Wall Street Journal and CNN and BBC, all of them are in Italy every day looking, at, looking for hate crimes by Salvini and the rest of the officials that are trying to bring order to Italy. Where about the economic hate crimes that have been foisted upon you? This cannot go on. I'm an honors graduate of the Harvard Business School. I worked at Goldman Sachs in the mergers and acquisitions department when that was the elite of Goldman Sachs. I can do simple arithmetic. We're building towards another financial crisis that will make the one in 2008 look like a Sunday picnic. This is going to be a crisis of debt. It's going to be a crisis of currency. You know why the rational millennials who don't form families and have babies? They understand that the central government's supplying unlimited negative interest, basically free money, the central banks providing free money to governments, has, has everybody on a wheel of debt, a wheel of credit. You're like a little hamster, right? You continue to churn and churn and churn and churn and churn. You're not going to own anything. You can't save anything because there's zero interest rates and savings. You can't buy. You can't buy any real property, any real estate because the prices are inflated. Why are the prices inflated? Because they created money to let the wealthy bail themselves out and allow countries like China and other countries to come in and buy your real estate. People under 35 years old, the millennials, please understand one thing. You're better fed, you're better educated, you're in better shape, you're more culturally aware than 19th century Russian serfs, but you are nothing but serfs. You don't own anything, and you're not going to own anything. There's no jobs. There's no value-added jobs. You're just going to be on the continual wheel of the gig economy. Two paychecks away from absolute financial ruin. And the tech companies, the big tech companies, the state capitalism of big government and business with big tech of Facebook and Google and Twitter and all of it, what do they do all day long? They take your own intellectual property, your digital personhood, they take it for free, they sell it back to you at huge margins, and they create algorithms just to keep you on the wheel, to keep you on the wheel. That cycle has to be broken. It's what the brothers of Italy talk about when they talk about a more traditional society. A society built around the family, a society built around the tenets of the Judeo-Christian West that has been handed down to us for 5,000 years, from Athens to Jerusalem to Rome. That's why I'm so honored to be here today and humbled to be here today. When Farage and Kassab and others in UK started in the UK, and what Donald Trump was able to take from the Tea Party and start to execute in the United States, the torch was passed to you. 
And remember what happened. After an overwhelming victory, when you added up it all, two-thirds of the vote back in March was anti-establishment. Essentially saying, we have to have change. And we want our sovereignty back. We want our citizenship back. And we are tired as Italians of being told that to protect our civilization, to protect our society, to protect our families, to protect our culture, and to protect our countries that were racist, xenophobes, and neighbors, we need that. And what was their response? Oh, we're going to put in another technocrat to run the government. I mean, the audacity of these people is unbelievable. You know, it's like the BBC and CNN and the mainstream media and all the opposition party media, they're all saying now, oh, democracy's not working, it's so liberal, democracy's not working. Democracy's not working for them because they're not winning elections. It worked fine for them when they were winning, but now that the people in Hungary and in Italy and the United Kingdom, the United States are stepping up, working class people, not elites, working class people, and saying, we're not going to do that anymore. We're not going to go down that road. We understand what we have to pass on to future generations, and yes, we are going to fight for it. That's why of everything that's going on, even in Brexit, even with Trump, with all the resistance, yours is the most important experiment. Because here, you're trying to make it work with people putting aside sometimes foundational principles to try to make it work. That's why all the media is here. It's not to see some schmendrick like me. It's because they want to look at every mistake your government makes, every misstep that Georgie Maloney makes, Every time somebody's brother in Italy says something wrong, they want to have a camera in your face. Because they're smart. They understand if it works here, the revolution will spread. <laughs> I've dedicated the last nine or ten years of my life to do this. You know, I come from a I come from a, a blue-collar family. My dad was a, a lineman in the film company. My grandfather was a lineman in the film company. His father was an engineer on a, uh, on a, on a boat in a harbor in Baltimore. We come from very, very, very simple means. My dad's 97 years old. He lives in the same house since 1955, I think. It cost him $5,000 or $6,000. A very simple guy, but a great man. It's for those guys. Remember, we came from Ireland and we came from Germany. As our family says, we got kicked out of every decent company in Europe, every decent country in Europe to get to America. But that's why I've dedicated my life to this populist movement in the United States. And now, with the movement, with my partners in Belgium, we're starting this group called the Movement, which is a loose association of like-minded parties and individuals. And after the November elections, when President Trump defeats the cultural Marxist Democratic Party and is not impeached, I will be spending 80% you know, of my time in Europe in preparation for the European parliamentary elections. And we'll be doing, we'll be doing uh, technical work that if parties in France or in Germany or in Austria or in the Czech Republic or in Italy if you so deem that it could help you in focusing on the European Parliament elections and winning, that we will provide and do uh, polling and data analytics and set up war rooms and rapid response, all the kind of nuts and bolts stuff that people need to win elections. Purely voluntarily. So I'm not here to tell, I'm not here to tell Europeans what to do. I'm not here to tell people of Italy what to do. You know what to do. It's obvious you have a program. That's what the people in Brussels are so afraid of. That's what they fear you. Remember, they don't fear Farage and Trump and, and Salvini or Georgia Maloney or Steve Bannon. Yeah, we're the targets. We're the targets because you're in backers. 
they understand political power. And they understand the deplorables in the United States and the working men and women in England that voted for Brexit and the League and the Brothers of Italy and others that voted for change in Italy are raw political power. 